Good morning and welcome to this service of choral matins from the Town and Civic Church of Ipswich, St Mary La Tower. There has been a community of Christians gathering to pray on this site for over a thousand years and this morning you are entering into that great stream of prayer offered through the centuries. Today the Church of England celebrates Education Sunday. It's a day where we pray for those beginning a new academic year either as pupils, students or staff but also a day to give thanks to God for the gift of learning. From our agile education programmes through to our choral tradition, education is a key part of the mission of this church. Among our choir, we have nearly 40 young people, both boys and girls, children and teenagers. Weekly, they share in the leading of worship, not just singing, but leading prayer and reading lessons. They regularly attend church three or four times a week, receiving a thorough Christian education through our Friday school and the rhythmic pattern of life and worship that the choral tradition provides. They bring an enormous amount to the life and work of this church. I have to be honest though, despite being the vicar here, I am not a singer and know very little about music. But I wouldn't be here today if the choral tradition hadn't first taught me to pray. And so I hope that your experience of worship with us today will enable you to pray and to know the peace and presence of God wherever you are. Welcome. With God, nothing will be impossible. For he is our God. And the God of salvation is making all things new. Amen.
The psalm set for this morning is Psalm 51, and the choir now sings the first ten verses. Please be seated. The first lesson is taken from the book Exodus, the 32nd chapter, beginning at the 7th verse. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, 
change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. Here ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner that repents now than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbours, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Here ends the second lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. serve thee in this life, that we fail not finally to attain thy heavenly promises, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, 
and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The anthem this morning is O Harken Now by Edward Elgar. The music is set to words from Psalm 5, and the piece was written for the coronation of King George V. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
there is a story of a young man who was lost. It all started after a number of big changes in his life, and he began to suffer with quite acute anxiety. He experienced panic attacks and all the sorts of strange physical manifestations that come with them. Unsurprisingly, his self-confidence was quickly eroded. He began to question pretty much everything. After he had hit what he felt like was rock bottom, life was different. He had unlearned all sorts of untruths about the world. He had learned all sorts of new truths about himself. And though he was beginning to pick himself up again, he still felt lost. Though he was trying to find his way, there just seemed to be no clear direction for him. The only consolation this young man felt was that he was not alone. This was true for far more people than would ever let on. At about this point, the young man received a visit from his parents. In a rather bizarre and unexpected conversation, the topic of the Christian faith came up. And for some reason, against pretty much everything the young man had ever thought or felt, there was a part of him that wanted to explore, inquire, and perhaps even learn something from this source of ancient wisdom. A number of weeks later, finding the internet quite unsatisfactory, the young man decided he might try the very novel thing of actually going to a church. Wandering around the town where he lived, he tried a few, but found the doors locked. Eventually, just at the point where he was ready to put all this Christian stuff to bed, he tried one last door and it opened. As it happened, there was a service about to start. Now, the young man had no idea what this service was for or what was going on, but he listened and he found that he didn't totally disagree with what was being said. He was struck too by the beauty and the majesty of the building, its atmosphere, the music that filled it. There was, he thought, a sense of transcendence, a sense of something other that yes, young man had never really experienced before. The young man would later describe this as an experience of God. After this day, thanks to a caring priest, a community of friendly people, and incidentally, a choral tradition that taught him to pray, slowly but surely, the young man didn't feel so lost anymore. To his surprise, that sense of God actually stuck around. And though he wouldn't yet say he'd found his way, he did have the overwhelming sense that he himself had been found. That young man was me. Sisters and brothers, this changed my life. From it, I learned to pray. I opened myself to a relationship with God, to a way of life that allowed me to experience peace, to feel a love free of conditions and expectation, in a way I had never really done before, in a way that, sadly, so very few people do. It enabled me to explore what a life of fullness, freedom and flourishing could really look like. It began a journey that allowed me to discover what it truly meant for me to be me. What God had longed for me all along. Sisters and brothers, the world needs this love. It needs the church. It needs God. As people across the country begin a new school or academic year, many of us will find ourselves reflecting on the lessons we have learnt over our lives. Some of them will be good and happy ones. Others will be memories of things we have had to learn the hard way. I definitely have had my fair share of those. But let me tell you, the greatest lesson I have learnt is that of God's love 
God's love not just for me, but for each and every one of us. God longs for us to be found. He has made us for himself, and so, St. Augustine says, our hearts will be restless until they find their rest in him. Because God loves us so much, he doesn't want us to just stay as we are. He has gifted us our being, but has left room in us for our becoming. When I was younger, I wanted to be a footballer. Then I wanted to be a fast jet pilot, and actually having watched Top Gun 2 twice this summer, I think if I'm honest, I still do. But as you can see, things didn't quite work out as I'd hoped. But you know what? Most days, at least, I'm really glad they didn't. Because I think becoming a priest really is what I was always meant to do. And I think that because since becoming one, I have felt more and more like I'm becoming me. Like I'm becoming the person I am supposed to be. Now, of course, becoming who you are supposed to be probably won't look like becoming a priest, though you never know. But I want you to know this. That is what God wants for you. All of you, each and every one of you. God wants you to become who you are supposed to be. Now, you might think that's quite obvious. But actually, it seems to me that becoming more you, more us, is rarely encouraged these days. You only have to spend five minutes on social media to be told that actually, it would be probably better if you became someone else. We're told that the best lives, those we are to aspire to, the lives of the influence, the rich and the famous, they're the ones we should be going for. That if we don't become like them, we're not cool enough, pretty enough, not good enough. But do not be tricked by this, especially those of you who are starting a new school or college or university. Do not believe it. That is fake news. The lesson that Jesus teaches us, what we learn through him, is that God searches for you. God longs for you, loves you. No matter who you are, what you have done, or what you look like, God loves you in all your uniqueness, indifference, and wondrousness. Your task, whether starting back at school or college, or even just another year in the university of life, is to do all you can to explore and discover what that looks like in all its fullness. For when you do, there you shall be found, and there will be great, great joy in heaven. Amen. In the first lesson, we hear of the importance of keeping promises and commitments. And so, in our vocation as a civic church, we pray for all those who are elected on promises to serve in public office. We pray for our government, our members of parliament, our local councillors, that they may be enabled to serve as they have sought to, and that they are strengthened to pursue peace justice and the common good. Almighty God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you have made all of us for yourself 
so that our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Grant to us all, but especially those elected to lead, a purity of heart and a strength of purpose, so that no selfish passion might prevent us from knowing your will, and that in your service we might find perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the second lesson, we hear of the joy in heaven for those who enter into relationship with God. And so we pray that the church across the land, we may see that joy abound. We pray for the growth of the church in number and depth. We pray that the Christian life in this country may be renewed and that more lives may be transformed by your love and hope. O oh Lord, our God, giver of life and growth, grow in all of your people a longing for you that all might know you and deepen their faith. Grow in us a compassion for your world that we might serve our neighbours. Grow in us a vision for your kingdom that we might proclaim your love by the power of your spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. And on this Education Sunday, we pray for all those who have a desire to learn. We pray for all universities, colleges and schools. For those who have a vocation to teach. For those who work in education institutions and support others in their learning. May you grant them in this new year, not just knowledge, but wisdom and may you enable them to flourish and become the people you long for them to be. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the opportunity to learn. At the beginning of this new year, we present ourselves to you for your blessing. Give us courage and cheerfulness in facing the tasks before us. Make us loyal and unselfish in our dealings with one another and help us both in our work and in our play always to give our best. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And finally, we draw these and all of our prayers together, commending them to God in the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.
The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.